What is complementary counting? Complementary counting is a combinatorics technique where you subtract the cases you don't want from the total number of cases. Sounds simple, right? Well, it can actually be used to trivialize some seemingly difficult problems, and it's extremely powerful. Let's explore how it can be used. Let's start off with this example. You have seven slips of paper numbered one through seven. How many ways are there to choose any subset of these slips such that you have at least two odd numbers and at least one even number? So let's divide one through seven into odds and evens. Odds, evens. Okay, so we must have at least two odd numbers. Two odd numbers at least. And at least one even number. So we could do casework. One even number, two even numbers, three even numbers. Mm, that's going to take a long time. And can we maybe find something simpler, a simpler solution using complementary counting maybe? Oh, it says at least. And at least is actually a really good keyword to use complementary counting. So if the subset must have at least one even number, what is the opposite of that? No even numbers. Ah, so no even numbers is the opposite of at least one even number. Okay, so we've kind of got like two sub problems here, the odd numbers, the even numbers. It's a little bit complicated dealing with both at the same time. Let's hone in our attention on the even numbers for now. So let's say how many subsets of just the even numbers? Well, we've got three elements, so just two cubed minus one, right? Because two cubed, because there's two choices for whether each element will stay in the set or not stay in the set. So two cubed, that's the total number of subsets of the even numbers. Now, how many of them, now how many subsets have no even numbers in them? How many subsets of 2, 4, and 6 have no even number or basically nothing in them? That's just one, the empty set, right? Nothing, no even numbers. So just 2 cubed minus 1. All possibilities, all subsets of 2, 4, 6, except the empty set, have at least one even number. Now let's focus our attention on the odd numbers. Odd numbers. So again, Let's do something similar. We've got 2 to the 4 sub possible subsets of the odd numbers. At least two odd numbers. What's the opposite or rather complement of at least two odd numbers? That means the opposite of that is there's either no odd numbers, no odds, no odd numbers, or one odd numbers, odd number. Okay, so 2 to the 4 total, let's subtract the cases where there's no odd numbers. Well, that's just the empty set, of course, because there's only one set with not, none of the odd numbers in them. Because all subsets of 1, 1, 3, 5, 7 have an odd number except the empty one. Now, what about one odd number? We have to subtract those as well. How many subsets have one odd number? Well, there's a subset of 1 only, the subset of 3 only, the subset of 5 only, and the subset of 7 only. So minus 4. 16, which is 2 to the 4, minus 1, minus 4, that's 11. And 2 cubed minus 1 is 8 minus 1, 7. Oh, so we've got 11 choices for picking some of these odd numbers and 7 choices for picking some of these even numbers. Overall, we just got... 11 times 7, which is 77 total possibilities. The key thing here was seeing that at least two odd numbers, one even number, that's kind of a sign to separate them, focus on them separately, because if you deal with them at the same time, you'll be having a bunch of cases. So deal with them separately, and then notice that at least. So we used complementary counting, 2 to the 3 minus 1 for even numbers, 2 to the 4 minus 5 for odd numbers, multiply, and we've got our answer. Let's take this problem from the AMC 10. 
when a certain unfair dice is rolled, an even number is three times as likely to appear as an odd number. The die is rolled twice. What's the probability the sum of the numbers is even? Okay, sum of numbers even. What must be true for that to happen? Sum of numbers even. Oh, okay, so odd plus odd, of course, or even plus even. So we could do two cases, odd plus odd, even plus even. It would definitely work, but can we maybe use complementary counting to make it even simpler? What's the only way that we don't roll an even sum? Odd plus even. Okay, okay. So what's the probability of rolling an odd number and an even number? Hmm. Well, first of all, what's the probability of even rolling an even or odd number? We should probably have to use this condition somehow. So an even number is three times as likely to appear than an odd number. So if the even number probability is, let's say, 3x, and the odd number has a probability x of appearing, the total probability of an even number and odd number appearing is 4x, which has to be 1, right? You have two types of numbers, even or odd. The total probability of both of them occurring should be 1, total. So x is 1 fourth. So the probability of rolling an even number, 3 fourths, odd number, 1 fourth. So what's the probability of rolling an odd number and then an even number? 1 fourth times 3 fourths. What's the probability of rolling an even number then an odd number, 3 fourths times 1 fourth. If we sum these quantities up, we get that it's 3 over 16 plus 3 over 16, which is 3 over 8. But remember, we're doing complementary counting. So these are the cases that don't work. So we have to do 1 minus 3 eighths equals 5 eighths. This is the probability the sum will be even, right? Because this is the probability the sum is odd. So 5 eighths is our answer. Cool. Okay. Now, sometimes we have to do complementary counting with casework. It's not always just direct complementary counting. Now, you might be asking, what's the point of doing complementary counting if we still have to take a bunch of cases? The thing is, it's not usually a bunch of cases anymore. It's just a few, a few cases rather than a giant long casework bash. So let's explore. Complementary counting with casework, how useful it is. There are three sections of a dartboard. The outermost section worth two points of hit. The middle worth section five. And the innermost, ten. Let's draw this. Innermost is two. Middle is five. And outermost, that's just ten. Okay, the probability of hitting the intersection, one-fourth. And... It seems like all the probabilities are an 8, so let's just say 2 eighths. 2 eighths probability of hitting the innermost section. Middle section, 3 eighths. Outermost section, 2 eighths. And you miss the dartboard entirely, 1 eighth. You throw 3 darts. What's the probability? You get less than 20 points. Less than, oh, that seems like it's going to be a lot of cases. We can have 2, 2, 5, 2, 2, 0, 5, 5, 10, oh. Or not 5, 5, 10, 5, 5, 0, 5, 2, 0. There's just so many cases that have a sum of less than 20. And I don't think we have the time in this video to do that. We're going to use complementary counting to the rescue. Instead of finding the probability of getting less than 20 points, let's find the probability of getting 20 or more. Okay, so in what cases do we get 20 or more? It seems like, oh, 10, 5, 2, it seems like... To get 20, we're going to have to be really close to the maximum. The maximum is 30, and to get 20 or more, we're going to have to be really close to that maximum. So let's see. 10 is the biggest number, so we're, let's do casework based on how many 10s we have. And then it'll be easy to divide it up from there. We could have 3 10, so 10, 10, 10, and that obviously will be 20 or more. We could have 2 10s. So 2 10s. 10, 10, and oh, it seems like no matter what the third digit is, the sum will be 20 or more automatically. So it could be 10, 10 and any other number. 10, 10, 0, 10, 10, 2, 10, 10, 5, and 
we already counted 10, 10, 10. That has three tens, right? And we can't have zero because zero is outside the dartboard entirely. What about 110? Is that even possible? Well, 10, 5, 2, that's too small. 10, 2, 2, that's too small. If we have 110, what's the largest possible sum? 10 plus the two other largest numbers, 5 and 5. So 10, 5, 5, oh, that just barely gives a sum of 20. So this is the only possible case with 110 because this is a max for 110. This is the maximum sum. These are the two highest values besides 10. What about zero tens? This is not possible because the maximum value for each uh, dart hit is five. Five plus five plus five, 15, just a tad too small. Okay, so each of these cases, and now all we have to do is find each of them separately. What's the probability of getting 10, 10, 10? That's just two eights times two eights times two eights, which is eight over, 8 cubed, which is 512. 8 cubed is 64 times 8, which is 512. 10, 10, 0. So we have three choices for where the 0 will go. It can be in the first position, second, or third. 3 times, okay, 10 has a probability of 2 weights. 10 has a probability of 2 weights. And 0 is just 1 8, right, outside the dartboard. Okay, and this is just uh, 12 over 512, right, because 3 times 2 times 2. Now, 10, 10, 2. This is 3 times 10 is 2 eighths. 10 is 2 eighths, the second 10. And the 2 is also 2 eighths. And this is also going to just be, this is going to be 24 over 5, 12. Cool. And this gives the sum, all of these will of course be more than 20. 10, 10, 5. Okay, this is getting interesting. 3 times 2 eighths for the first 10 times 2 eighths for the second 10 times 3 eighths for the 5. That's 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. 36 over 5, 12. Okay, finally, 1, 10. Okay, we've got three slots, so three choices for the 10. Okay, then uh, times 10 has a probability of 2 eighths. And then the first 5, probability 3 eighths. Second 5, probability 3 eighths. And again, we're multiplying by 3 for all of these cases because there's one, one number that's different, so there's gonna be three choices for where it can go. Let's move out of the way. Okay, so now all we have to do is add all these up. And by the way, the final case is just going to be three times two, six, six times nine, 54, 54 over five, 12. And now this is just addition. Eight plus 12, 20. 20 plus 24, 44. 44 plus 36, that's 80. 80 plus 54, that's 134. So overall, the probability that we get 20 or more is 134 over 512, which simplifies to 67 over 256. Be careful here. A very common mistake is to forget to do one minus at the end because you forgot you're doing complementary counting. Or remember, the problem says get less than 20 points. We so far found the probability of getting 20 or more. So the probability of getting less than this is just one minus 67 over 256. And what is this? This is 189 over 256, right? We do one minus that quantity. So 189 over 256 is our final answer. A great problem. The essentials were seeing that what are the cases where the sum is 20 or more, and we found all of these by organized casework. We added them all up. We found this, subtracted, one minus, remember that, never should get in a good habit when you're doing complementary counting. Remember, maybe if it takes it, write one minus and then draw like a big star around it or something so you don't forget. You don't know how many times people forget to do one minus on complementary counting problems and then get it wrong because of that. Do whatever you do, need to do. If there's one thing you take away, one minus. Okay, now let's move on to principle inclusion and exclusion. So not always you can just find the complement. Sometimes there's overlapping to multiple things you have to subtract. And for this, we use pi. Let's explore pi right here. 